Oh, my God. 
And when they came again to them, but he tarried at Jericho, he said unto them, Did I not say unto you, Go not? Yeah. 
high school. But James is also uh, graduating from Cedar Valley Junior College. Uh, he has a dual graduation, and he will graduate with his associate's degree in general studies. Jaden plans to attend North Texas in the fall. Our last one, she is not here uh, today, but we want to recognize Yakisha Jones. Uh, that is the daughter of Sheila Jones, the sister of Brandy Jones. And Yakisha is graduating with her master's degree from Lamar University. Church, amen. 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 Say amen again. Amen. 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 We give praise to our God for the privilege and pleasure of coming together to worship. One more time. Glad to see all of you here on the Lord's Day. Looking all nice and all that other good stuff. We're especially happy to have our visitors with us and we trust and pray that this is a very rewarding experience for you and that you will come again our way. Amen. Amen. Don't you give God some praise for this choir. Bless us all. Day. Nixon. No fire on me. New roads. They new roads. They new roads. They got three or four, five looks. So it's tough. They tough. Uh, Brother Alan Green. Which I'm going to talk. Oh, there he is. Thomas Matthew. Praise God for them and for their work that is well done. Amen. Come yourselves according to the announcements. The announcements, we want to pray for all those persons who are sick. Uh, mentioned about uh, Reverend Allen, Reverend Freeman today, who is in the hospital again. He got a special wing. He bought me. <laughs> and so let's keep him in our prayers that God will continue to bless him. Please pray for all those precious to all. Our sick medicine, we are so uh, thankful that God is indeed our refuge and our strength. Amen. We're so thankful that uh, Sister Chris recognized our graduates. We are proud of all of them. They are all faithful members of our church, and so we're excited, and I hope that you will express your appreciation to them in a very tangible way, for they're all deserving. Amen. Uh, oh, James, Aiden, Gain. I'm surprised. Oh, boy, I got two degrees, man. Tough, boy. Yeah. 
get your high school and college all at the same time. You know, you can tell he got a, he got a smart pastor boy that was. <laughs> yeah, Sister McKenzie. Uh, we are looking forward to great things from her. She's got a whole black dress today. She's got a Next Sunday will be our check day. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! First one is Albert Haynes Jr. <laughs> birthday is on the 21st. His sister's birthday is on July the 12th, and I didn't want him to have the same number, so I just picked it to 21st. Yeah, we did. Well, yeah, you got to be good to do that. <laughs> Two daughters, same birthday. Yeah. Ain't no accident. You got to have skills. <laughs> uh, can you let your son come last flip that over you? If you don't believe it, do it. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. <laughs> Rod J. Rod J. Rod J. Smith. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. <laughs> 
turn to our tag now. Amen. We want to thank you for blessing us and we will be blessed with you. Bless these child and all of you, enemy and king. And we ask him to take us in the name of Amen. Tag now. Yeah. <laughs> 
Reading Whoopi Goldberg's book, she got a new one out, Bits and Pieces. I suggest you get a copy of that. Um, I like it with the Whoopi uh, has this uh, trait of not having a problem being real about herself. I know that about uh, Robert Morris and Joyce Myers. They, they don't mind telling you about their flaws. I don't mind that because you know, a lot of y'all try to pretend that you're better than you actually are. It's <laughs> hard so to help people if you try to pretend you're perfect and you are not. But uh, Whoopi, uh, in that book, talks about her upbringing and um, how she had a special relationship with her mother and her brother. They were raised um, poor, but she was saying how her mother did such an outstanding job, they never knew they were poor. Yeah. Yeah. Most of us have the same testimony. I mean, all of how our parents did so much with so little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we seem like we were special. We were raised better than most. When really we were just as poor as other folks. Hmm. Yeah. Whoopi um, talks about how. She had a rough time, and I kind of wanted to look at that today because there comes a time in all of our lives when the devil wants to mess you up. Yeah, yeah. He wants to hinder you from reaching your God-given destiny. Yeah. Do oh, I have a witness here? So that uh, I was reading my daily reading, and I came upon chapter two. And you know, when you stir it, you read all the time. I never uh, paid a lot of attention to it. I paid attention, but it didn't grab me like it did this week when reading about Elisha and Elijah, that uh, God informs Elijah that he's about to be promoted. Mm -hmm. But God also informs Elisha that Elijah is about to be promoted. Um, that doesn't surprise me because that's the way God works. That when you are a child of God, He kind of lets you know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. What got my attention is that every step of the way, Elijah tried to get Elisha. Not to come with you. Hmm. What's up with that? He knows he's going to be promoted, but he doesn't want Elijah to come with him. Uh, I, I concluded he must be a test. Sometimes God tests us, though. God is trying to see if we're worthy of the next step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense to me. Uh, uh, sometimes you think you deserve a certain thing, but but your actions don't uh, agree with what you think it's supposed to be about. Yeah. Yeah. One commentator kind of took me a check. The commentator said that uh, Elijah knew that he's about to leave, and so he was sparing Elisha. The hurt of seeing him leave here. Yeah. He didn't want Elijah to see him in the cast. Uh, I don't know what that could have been, but then that introduces something else that it's possible God tells Elijah he's going to be promoted. God tells Elijah that Elijah is going to be promoted, but God doesn't tell Elijah. That Elisha knows. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that uh, 
I love that about God. God deals with us on an individual basis. And your relationship with God is your relationship with God. And you need to take special notice of how God is dealing with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you read the passage, you'll see that uh, he says he is on his way to Bethel. And uh, I don't want you to go with me. But then he goes a little further and says, I'm on my way to Jericho. And I don't want you to go with me. I'm on my way to uh, Jordan. I don't need you to go. But at every stop, there are sons of the prophet who pulls Elisha aside. I said, do you know your master is going to leave here today? Y'all better free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do believe that God keeps us informed. I think that God is not going to take certain people out of your life without giving you a warning. Because he recognized it might be too devastating. But at the same time, the fact that the sons of the prophet know and then they decide, decide they want to tell Elisha, man, you know he's going to leave here today. And look what Elisha said, yeah, I know, y'all. Cool, chill. Let it go, let it go. Lord, I, I took that to me. Uh, I know he's going, I don't need him. Yeah, yeah, I don't want no distraction. I don't need none of them. You know how people get profound. You know, they start talking about that. They think they know something about it. I know, just chill. God tells Elisha, God tells the students, and when God tells the students, the fact that they know what suggests to me, they know their place. You know, sometimes we everybody gonna be promoted. But you see, you know when it's not time for your promotion. You know when it's not you that's going to be promoted. Some people can't take the idea that a cohort is going to be promoted. They are not promoted, but you see, you want to act like you walk with God. See, sometimes there's a lot of fighting in fighting with all that me in fighting. You know that it's not your time. You see, if you try to pull somebody else down when well, you know it's not your turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. you have to learn how to celebrate when God chooses somebody. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So that, so that, uh, they go forward, they go forward, they go forward. Uh, there comes a time when you have to know what you know yeah. and proceed forward. You got to know what you know. Because uh, the devil is always trying to rob you. Myers talked about a difficult time in her life. The other verse I should have given you was. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. And then that Paul deals with this matter of uh, in difficult times, you know, you need to know how to go to God. Right. Those two verses. She, she talked, Myers talks about a time when, when she was kind of hit with an attack, a demonic attack. She called it a, a, a mind binding spirit. All of a sudden, her mind is just hit with doubts. She had separate thoughts about the fact that, uh, you know, God has promised her a promotion, God has promised her uh, a new movement of ministry, whatever it is. And, and all of a sudden, the demonic attacks uh, hits her thinking, and she starts having these doubts, these separate thoughts. And she knows it's not a God because she knows what God has already told her, but, but she just can't. Get rid of it. I like, I like, I like, I like it. You see, a lot of times you act like you're so close to God, everything is always going well. But the fact of the matter is, in every life, some rain must fall. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like you're going to have some good times and some bad times. And, and so I need to know in the bad times, what do I do? Well, George Myers said, when things are not right, you need to talk to God about it. Right. And I talk to God about it. I need to have some of those verses when you read them. That, Chapter 4, Philippians 6 and 7, it talks about basically gives you the assurance of the love of God. And not only is that the, the love of God, but there's also uh, the matter of uh, 
uh, the wisdom of God, and then not only do I see the love of God and the wisdom of God, but I also see the power of God. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that's some good stuff there. That's some good stuff. And so she, she's able to, to go forward when she talks with God about it. But I was I was teaching class on Wednesday. It was very interesting. Uh, I was uh, <laughs> I was talking about. Uh, Nobody is so good they can know what other people are thinking. Everybody says, <laughs> and then I said, uh, I think when he flips it, because I'm always saying controversial stuff, you know. And I said, they were talking about prostitutes, and, uh, and I don't like people putting people in pigeons, labels, pigeonholes. And so I made the mistake, I made this statement. Prostitutes eat what regular folk eat. I'm thinking about you know steak, pork chops, but somebody else man was in the gun. No, I don't. No, I don't. What's up with that? You ought to be ashamed of yourself thinking I made you a preacher. I say I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm talking about pork chops. Makes it crazy out there. See, because my problem is you always want to label sinners as that so they are so different from you when you need to recognize saints and sinners ain't that different. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of y'all think y'all are saints because you dress a certain way. Because you walk a certain way, but it's not the truth of that ain't that much difference. You know, so so I said, I mean, they just got through telling me you can't read somebody else's mind. But don't look me in my face and tell me what I'm thinking. <laughs> I said, okay, okay. But, but when I know what I know, I don't, I always, I don't do it. But I said, how the devil tries to grab me. Yeah, yeah. Then I had a, a what's her face? Oh, oh, oh yeah, she, and then the class, she's going to talk about she was praying. And God didn't ask her prayer. And I said, uh, I could go through a lot of stuff, but she went through the member class. So I said, and I'm saying this all of you. I took her to Matthew chapter 7. It talks about asking and she'll be good. Yeah. See, you should find lock the door. And, and I said, basically, prayer is three things asking, mm -hmm. asking, Seeking, yeah, yeah, not. And I said, but well, now whenever you ask God for something, yeah. it says asking and she'll be. I said, so that means that every time I'm always being facetious. Every time I'm going to ask you, ask God for something, you're going to give to you. Yes, right, yes, right, yes, right. You know, you know, I say, so if I ask, and like, see, you got to really. Explain yourself because the Negroes run the wrong direction. Yeah, right. okay, so if I ask God for me to give me a woman on the side, <laughs> she happened to be a married woman, he's going to give it to her. <laughs> and they look, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. And so I can explain the unspoken word, the unseen rule in that passage that whatever you ask God for. He'll give it to you, provided it's in the confines yeah. of his will. Yeah. Yeah. Giving me a woman on the side is not in the confines of his will. Right, right. Yeah. But then later I asked about it. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, a pastor, asking some pastor God to give you a woman on the side. I'm a preacher to you. It seems like to me they got a listening problem. Yeah. Okay. Then here's something. So but see, my thing is this. My thing is this. You need to know who you are. Yeah. You need to know whose you are. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You need to know your relationship with God. Yeah. It appears to me that Elijah knew who you are. I mean, think about that. Your, your mentor is begging you not to follow. 
And you know what God told you. So Elijah says, I'm, I'm going to be with you. Come here to high water. I don't care what happens. Today, wherever you go, I'm going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wherever you head, I'm going to head. I will be with you no matter what. It's almost like Elijah is trying to really put it on because he, he gets to one place and then he goes to the next place. When he gets to the then he goes to Jericho. I, I got to go to Jericho. The Lord is sending me to Jericho. I'm begging you. You don't just say, I'm begging you to stay here. And Elijah says, I don't care what you beg. See, maybe you did the last time. I am not leaving you today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I have a witness here. Wherever you go, I'm going. How long you go, I'm going to be there. I will stick back by you like ugly old age, like white on right. Yeah. I'm going to be by your side. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. It's in the word. It's in the word. That happened. Not one time, not two. Three times it happens. And three times the, the, the other prophets tell them, you know, your, 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 your mentor is going to die today. He leaving us. Well, the point I'm making is, is that when you are destined by God, you ought to know your destination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when God has informed you of your destination, yeah, yeah. you ought to have a determination. That's why I spoke to announce to y'all. My first topic is destiny determination. Destiny and determination. He knows his destiny. And he's determined to stay on course. How I many of you know the devil don't want you to stay on course? The devil wants you to throw in the towel. The devil wants you to give up. The devil wants you to get discouraged. The devil wants you to, to born out in your spirit. But you've got to know from the inside what God told you. Yeah, yeah. And when yeah. you know that you know that you know yeah. what the Lord told you, you're going to stay on course. Yeah. Sometimes it don't look like it, but you got to stay on course. He, yeah. he told you certain things don't happen. And, and it doesn't look like what he told you is going to happen, but you got to stay on course. Yeah. I know God told, told me some things about this church. And when the numbers start getting kind of thin, when the pandemic was, man, you could, you could play football in here. But you know, you, know, you still got to stay on even now. They got a lot of blank seats, and the devil is really trying to mess with you. But when you know what God told you, there are some things God told me about Bethany. There are some things God told me about the growth of Bethany. There are some things God told me about some things He's going to do. And God said, You got to stay on course. I don't care what it looks like with your eyes, and there's both, oh, well, you know, we got the church is dying. Well, maybe your mind is dying, but God didn't tell me nothing about no death. God, God says, I got some plans for you. I, I got some plans for this. I'm, I'm going to do some great things. God needs to get to prune some things. Sometimes you got to cut some things off. You know, In order for you to grow, you got to throw some people away. In order for you to grow, you got to send some folks away. Sometimes you got to get things. I told you, I'm going to do Real so and so walked out of the Bible preaching. I said, sometimes when people walk out on you, you ought to celebrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wish I had a witness here. Because yeah. I found out the devil has a hard time listening to the word of God. Yeah. And when you talk in the word, when you preach in the word, when you're throwing the word out there, that's going to drive some folk out. So when some folk get up and walk out, I said, thank you, Lord. Go over and have a new Tell when it's a demon because as soon as they leave out there's a, a breeze that comes through that, that the Holy Ghost just start breathing up. Things get hotter, things get warmer, things get better. You have to learn how to listen to God for what his directives are and learn how to hold to God's unchanging name. That makes it bring me to my next point, divine direction. Notice how not only does God inform Elisha, but he also informs the other prophets uh, his place of being promoted. They knew it was Elisha's turn to be promoted and not their own. I've already preached it. Pretend you never heard it. I just said it. Now you got it. 
The point is, is that God gives directions and when things get difficult, I need to follow God's directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help me, Holy Ghost. When God says it's time, you've got to know it's time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the preacher David. He's talking about this matter of uh, iniquities and transgressions. Yeah. We'll forgive your iniquities. Uh, God will pardon your transgressions. Iniquities. You need to know the distinction between iniquities and transgressions. Iniquities are your internal sins. That's when you got it on the inside. I think about it. That's iniquity. Yeah. Transgressions are when it's on the outside. Uh, it's like, to give you an example, it's like when you think on the inside, it's lust. When you do it on the outside, it's adultery. They don't sit there like they don't know what I'm talking about. On the inside, it's lust. On the outside, it's fornication. See, on the inside, it's your iniquities. On the outside, well, in that, in that um, Psalm 103, we never get a chance. Uh, he talks about that thing. But then it said in the Bible, God will separate your sins from him. Yeah. As far as the east is from the west. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that. Uh, and I ain't talking about a round world, but they think the world is flat. So that I means you can keep going as far as you go in the east. And then you go in the other direction in the west. I said, that's how far your sins are from the Lord. And the Bible, the Bible does not say God will forget your transgression, which I have witnessed. It says he will not remember. Oh, y'all better hear something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. See if he said he's going to, God can't forget anything. Amen. You can't say that God is omniscient. He knows everything. You know, well, I'll forgive you, but I can't forget. But God, God, God didn't say, I'm going to forget your sins. He says, I will not remember your sins. Somebody should have been shouting right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words, in other words, God says, Yeah, I can my my mind, my wisdom, my my ability, I know everything, so I've got to know your sins. Yeah, yeah. But I choose not to remember your sin. In other words, when you forgive a person, you 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 don't forget what they did, but you ought to choose. That when God is working with you, and God is working, God has a plan for you, and you need to stay on course. And when you stay on course, you choose to stay in the will of God. The devil tries to get you to go in the wrong direction, but you ought to choose to stay on course. I'm going to hold to God. I'm, I wish I had some. I'm saying to him. Yeah, yeah. So then I need. Need to know that, that God loves me, and, and I don't care what happened, God loves me, and since God loves me, I know God will do what's best for me. But then, not only is a God a loving God, He's a knowledgeable God. You can't get wiser than God. If you want wisdom, He says you want to ask God about it. If I want to be wiser, I need to talk to God about it. God can impart to me the wisdom and knowledge. And understanding I need in order to be 
who God wants you to be. That's what I'm talking about. Nobody can make you more knowledgeable than the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Not only is God loving, not only is God wise, but God is also powerful. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, yeah. yeah God, God is powerful, that his power enables him to defeat any adversary. Yeah. I don't have to worry about an enemy because the enemy is not even in the equation. <laughs> Whoever it is who's going against God yeah. is the one who's going to lose. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. Uh, they said Mike Tyson is fighting somebody uh, next month. I don't even know who the dude is. And old as Mike Tyson is, and as messed up as he is, I still feel sorry for the dude. Because, you know, uh, uh, one thing I found about Mike Tyson is if you watch him fight, it's one thing watching him, it's another thing you know boxing. I didn't realize until a while Mike Tyson looked like he just going there swinging at folks, but that dude got a method. He has a procedure. Oh, which the head. You know, he knows how to set up his punches to where it looks like he all he's doing is coming and swinging, but homeboy got a procedure. He gets you kind of kind of thinking one way, and all you do is exposing yourself another. He hits him in the side. When he hits him in the side, they go like this. And when they go like this, they put their head back, and all they do is when they when they lean forward, it opens them up for the uppercut. And then he tears them up and, and if he gets up, it depends on who it is, he might take one, he might take two, but sometimes he's gonna fall just from the other cut. Yeah, yeah. What are you saying? I'm saying as a procedure that God has wisdom and knowledge, but he has the power to do what needs to be done. You are talking about God can give you peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's not just that God gives you peace. God is so powerful, he's so loving, he's so wise, that God handles your adversaries in such a way you find yourself left with the peace of God, which, which surpasses it all understanding. Yeah, see, y'all had enough. That's not right. Well, I'm talking about a promotion, a Christian promotion. In other words, if I walk with God, God's going to give me what I need to sustain me. If I walk with God, God's going to direct me and lead me in paths everlasting. Yeah. When I walk with God, see, see, y'all waiting to go to heaven to find peace, but you need to find out how to have some peace here on earth. I don't need to go to heaven to get my blessings. I can have them right here. Yeah, yeah, if I'm going to heaven to be with God, you don't have to leave here. He says, I'll give you your presence right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I ain't talking about no gifts on the tree. I'm talking about his presence. If I got his presence, I got everything I need. I, if I got Jesus, that's enough. I, I can feel his presence. If I feel his presence, I'm going to feel his love. If I feel his love, I'm going to feel his wisdom. If I got his wisdom directing me, I'm going to have his power. If he's loving me and he's directing me and, and he's giving me what I need, I'm going to have his peace. His peace surpasses all understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When these people come, they go crazy and they got, they got, well, you listen to the wrong voices, baby. Stop listening to the negative voice and start listening to the Lord. You don't have to worry about suicide when God is on your side. Suicide has to go. God ain't going to tell you to blow your brains out when he says, you got me and I'm with you and lo, I'm with you all the way. Even unto the end of the world. Well, let me close this little thing out. Talk about a divine demonstration and deliverance. And it's one thing to talk to talk, but it's something else to walk the walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah God rewards faithfulness. Do I have a witness here? Is there anybody who want to testify that God will reward your faithfulness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elijah said, I'll testify. I, I've been walking with him for a long time. I've got a unique record that, that God has given me some unusual powers. I came out of nowhere, but they knew I was walking with the Lord. 
I told him, yeah, it's not going to rain. But the only reason I told him it wasn't going to rain is because the Lord told me it wasn't going to rain. Do I have a witness here? Like, yes. And then uh, y'all know about my colonel. Uh, when he prayed fire down from heaven. Y'all know uh, when God answered by fire, he started praying and asking God for rain. And the rain did fall. All I'm telling you, God is an awesome God. God is a miraculous God. God can do, uh, yes, what no one else can do. And I feel sorry for you folk who have never seen the awesomeness of God. Yeah, yeah. I feel sorry for you uh, who only know uh, this storybook God. God uh, is bigger than your storybook. This God uh, is such an awesome God that uh, he can speak and men will live. Uh, he can speak in me and uh, uh, lay down and die. Uh, is there anybody here that walk with the Lord? Well, uh, Elijah says, I'm going to testify uh, that when God walks with you uh, the way he walks with me, uh, he doesn't just let you leave any kind of way. Uh, yeah, yeah. He gives you a special home going. Uh, yes, uh, but I heard Elisha say, I uh, gonna be with you. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm gonna stay with you because I know God is up to something. How many of you know God is up to something? I feel sorry for you folks who just miss church all willy nilly. Like it's no big deal. I'm too scared to miss church because I'm scared God is up to something. I don't want to miss that Sunday when God's gonna perform a miracle. I don't want to miss that Sunday when God's going to do something that he's never done before. I don't want to miss that Sunday when he's going to move in a special way. So I'm going to make sure I stay with you. But look at Elijah. He's been begging Elijah not to come. But all of a sudden he says, what do you want? Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm about to leave here. But the whole I leave, I need to give you whatever it is you want. Look at Elisha. What do you want? Now, some of y'all think that's the time to be bashful. That's the time to think that you're not greedy. But when the Lord is looking at you and asking you what you want, that's the time to be greedy. That's the time when you want to tell the Lord what's really on your mind. And look what Elisha says. I want a, a double post. Oh, yeah, you want to go. He didn't say, I want to be like you. He says, I want a double portion of what you got. I just don't want to follow in your footsteps, but I want to be greedy about it. I want a double portion. Somebody said he wasn't talking about double times the power of Elijah, but he was talking about his portion as a heir of Elijah. I don't know about all that, but I knew he was asking Elijah for something special. How do you know that? Well, the way I know it is that Elijah says you ask a hard thing. You're asking for something that's not easily delivered. But Elijah didn't say you're denied. He just said just keep on watching. And when I'm taking that up, if you can see what happens to me, then God will answer your request. Do I have a witness here? That's, uh, yes, something good uh, when you know God is about to do the unusual. Uh, Elisha kept on walking, uh, and the Bible declared uh, all of a sudden uh, there was a whirlwind, uh, and it scooped down uh, and picked Elijah up. Uh, there was a whirlwind, uh, and it kind of came uh, and swooped him up, uh, and he's going up round and round. Uh, Elijah looked at and he saw the world win. 
I when he saw the world made. Yes, he saw what God was doing to Elijah. Now I want you to see something here that God transitions Elijah, but he doesn't transition him in the usual way. When he transitioned Elijah, he kills death and says, you will not die. You're just going to step on up a little bit. I wish I had to die. A little bit higher. Ain't but two people in the Bible that did not die. Yes. One was that fella Enoch. The Bible said he walked with God. And one day he just kept on walking. He did not die. Well, Elijah was so powerful. When God decided to call him home, he said he just going to miss that death step. But just keep on coming. And he was transitioned. That's all death is anyway. It's a transition from earth to glory. And God said, I don't need the extra step. But I can get you from one place to the other. Right here and now. And he transitioned him from being down here. From being up there. And he said, when he was transitioned, Elijah looked up. And when he looked up, but yes, Elijah's mantle uh, fell from up there uh, and came down. Uh, in other words, uh, I tend to leave you, uh, but I'm going to leave you something. Uh, what about you, yourself? Uh, if you ain't no in there uh, and you keep on walking with the right folk, uh, the Lord will enable them uh, to leave you something. Uh, and it's a mighty sad student uh, if you don't grab what they left you uh, and put it in the help, put it in the use. Some, nah, some of you, your mentor, they left you something, but you were so selfish. You didn't grab what they left you. You better go back to that old landmark and grab what they left you. They left you being rooted in the word. You better grab what they left you. They left you with a strong dedication to be in faith for the God to ministry. You better grab what they left you. They left you with a testimony. If when trouble come, you call on the name of the Lord. You better grab what they left you. Don't take it for granted. If they left you something, you need to hold on to it. He dropped his mantle. And when, yes, Elisha took his mantle. Yes, the Bible says he took the coat and he found it up, rolled it up, and when he got to the Jordan, he said, where is the spirit of Elijah? And the Bible said that he touched the wall the way Elijah touched it to get on this side. He touched the waters and the waters divided up to let it back on the other side. And they said all the students was looking right at him. They said, oh, that the spirit of Elijah is only master. And they bowed down and they began to minister unto Elijah. I'm closing now, but all I'm trying to tell you when the Lord decide he's going to promote you, he knows how to elevate you. Decide he's gonna promote you. He knows how to lift you up. But when the Lord promotes you, he's gonna give you what you need in order to be who he wants you to be. So all you gotta do is hold on to God.
the front wheel had, had come completely off and the car was down. I got on that car and I looked at that wheel and I just started laughing and I started praising God. Why would you laugh? I was thinking about all the things God kept me. And then all who did all the days God got me here and now. I'm talking about a drive 50, 60, 70 miles in my old car. And God kept me. And now this cause I didn't have anything to be mad about. I just start thanking God for keeping me this long. And I just start laughing and laughing. And finally, I took the tools out the car and started walking home. And on the way home, the lady stopped up and picked me up. She said, I was in my house, minding my own business. And I looked out the window. And I saw your wheel uh, fall off your car uh, when it shocked me. Uh, and still you looking nervous. Uh, you got out laughing. Uh, you got out like something good had happened. Uh, I just had to come pick you up uh, and find out uh, what you laughing about. Uh, and I told her uh, I'm laughing uh, because God uh, has been good to me. Uh, I'm laughing uh, because what God has done
Lord, pray for this church to continue to grow the room. In Jesus' name, Lord, in Jesus' name, do we pray. Amen. Amen.